I'll talk to you real quickly about how the Jews lie about Jesus Christ. Go to Matthew chapter 28 in your King James Bible. And I'll show you a little sneaky thing that they do here. Matthew chapter 28, um, beginning in verse 11. So it says here, Now when they were going, behold, some of the watch came into the city and showed unto the chief priests all the things that were done. And when they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel, they gave large money unto the soldiers, saying, Say ye, his disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept. And if this come to the governor's ears, we will persuade him and secure you. So they took the money and did as they were taught. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. What happened there in the first century is you had a split. You had the Jews that were there, the disciples of Jesus Christ, and they went and they, a lot of other Jews got saved. But then there was the majority of the nation of Israel that rejected Jesus Christ, and they made up these lies that there was no resurrection. See, Jesus clearly died on the cross. Well, okay, other Jews died on the cross. Other people died on the cross. But uh, Jesus came back from the dead. There was a resurrection there. And there was a conspiracy to cover it up. And Jews to this very day still believe it. Watch this clip. You know, from, from a Jewish point of view, where we don't believe in the divinity of Christ, I right. think that the, there you can make an argument that the, the Gospels, which were written... He was just a prophet. And, right? significant, no, 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 we don't I even believe he was a prophet. What do you think he was? What do you guys I, think I, I mean, I, what, I, what do I think he was historically? I think he was a Jew who tried to lead a revolt against the Romans and got killed for his trouble, just like a lot of other Jews at that time who were crucified mm. for trying to lead revolts against the Romans and got killed for their trouble. So he became legend and story, and it became a bigger and bigger deal as time yeah, went on. Yeah, he had a group of followers, and then mm. that gradually grew and then do you think there he was, was resurrected a, no that's not that's not a, a jewish belief okay i just want to check yeah no or we're not into <laughs> you know we're not into the miracle stories no that's, that's no? Not, no you don't have any miracles no not, not not by jesus right no? there are ones in the, the old God testament ones? yeah you've got moses splitting the sea and all that what do you think happened there what do i think happened there yeah well i'll go with the maimonidean explanation that there was a, i mean it says in the bible there was a strong east wind uh, so there's a naturalistic explanation for a physical phenomenon isn't that interesting Ben Shapiro, all oh, this conservative talk show guy and whatever else. Um, if you reject Jesus Christ, you're not conservative. You're an atheist. Jesus Christ is God. How can you claim to be a conservative and a, and a good man and whatever else when you reject God manifest in the flesh? doesn't make any sense. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. I'll show you some more proof here of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. A lot of people do that. They believe in vain. <clears throat> for I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. No disagreement there with the Jews. They believe he died. And that he was buried. They wouldn't disagree with that. But here's where the uh, problem comes in. And then he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. They deny the New Testament. And then he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. After that he was seen of above five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. And last of all he was seen of me also, as of one born out of due time. Jesus appeared to Paul on the road to Damascus. But it doesn't end there. You see, Jesus Christ has been uh, real and has, I can't say, appearing physically, manifesting himself physically to Christians ever since then. But he's moving into our lives. The hidden man of the, of the heart, excuse me, the Holy Spirit of God moves into us. I have fellowship with Jesus Christ every day. And you do too if you're born again. And that's something that the Jews can't perceive, the lost Jews that have rejected Jesus Christ. They just say, oh no, that whole thing, it just kind of died out back then. Um, <clears throat> it didn't die out. Okay, uh, Think about this. If Jesus was just some kind of a cult leader and they faked the whole thing, like the Jews back then said, we'll pay money, you know, and we'll just kind of put this propaganda out there that Jesus kind of died out in the first century and, you know, and his followers just kind of... Why would we... Why would people write so many hymns down through the centuries? Why is it that we have the year 2024 right now, A.D.? I know it's be, before the Common Era. 
okay, stupid, what does when what started the common era? You still have the problem of it starting with Jesus Christ. So you have BC, you know, here before Christ, and AD on Anno Domini, the year of our Lord. That's the right way to, to date things right now. But then you have the common era with these atheistic, you know, people, and they'll come out and they'll say it's common era, not you know, BC, it's C common era. Okay, what is the common era? What's what ended it? You're still with dealing with the birth of Jesus Christ. Okay, it doesn't make any sense why you'd have to change it. I mean, I realize you're an atheist and so you're a fool. Uh, that's professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Uh, change the glory of the incorruptible God, um, <clears throat> which is Jesus Christ. But you see, this whole system here, the Jews are have been doing this for a long time and they're heading into the time of Jacob's trouble as a result. And they're all running around saying about the Messiah, the Mashiach, the Mashiach is coming. Oh, the Mashiach. Oh, you mean the Antichrist. That's who they're really looking for. Their uh, buddy that's going to be bringing in all the uh, occult Freemasonic stuff. That's their world that they want. And again, I'm not being anti-Semitic. Uh, I'm not being that. They, they like to throw that term around whenever they get exposed or somebody kicks them or something like that. And I don't hate the Jews either, by the way. So uh, you can't pull that one off on me. Um, I'm a Bible believer. Bible believers are not hateful of the Jewish people. Uh, we rebuke them for their sins that they have. And their sin is rejecting Jesus Christ and rejecting the resurrection. Acts chapter 28. And if you don't have any kind of resurrection to look forward to, what kind of miserable life are you living? Pretty terrible. Acts chapter 28, verse 23. And when they had appointed him a day, the Jews, in other words, coming to Paul, there came many to him into his lodging, to whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of God, persuading them, that con them concerning Jesus, both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets from morning till evening. And you can do that, by the way. There's Jesus mention of Jesus all through, not by name, but God being manifest in the flesh and what Jesus was going to do. You can go through the whole Old Testament. The New Testament doesn't contradict the Old Testament when you rightly divide it. It's very important to understand that. And some believed the things which were spoken, and some believed not. So you can't just completely say, all Jews are wicked, they're, they're the synagogue of Satan, they're all terrible. No, the synagogue of Satan is those that say that they are Jews and are not. All right? There are real Jews out there. Oh no, they're all mingled, they're all just completely mingled. I don't believe that way. I believe, what's the point of the time of Jacob's trouble in the future if they're all mingled people? They're not all mingled. There's some that have stayed pure. Remember this Rabbi Mordecai Kraft, Mordecai Kraft I'll call him because you're not supposed to call anybody a rabbi on the earth, but uh, according to the words of Jesus. But he came out and he said that there were Jews living in Germany before World War II. Uh, they call them Ashkenazi Jew, which is not correct. Ashkenaz is the son of Japheth, but that's a, another issue. But these Jews living in Germany, he said 50% of them married with Gentile Roman Catholics to hide their identity. The 20th century was a lot of mingling among, among the Jewish people, by the way, but again, that's another story. But they mingled their seed with the Germans. You say, well, see, they're not pure anymore. Uh, that was 50% that mingled their seed with German Roman Catholics. 50% didn't. So, yes, I still believe that there are some Shemitic Jews out there that have not mingled their seed. And you can probably trace their bloodline back through the different 12th, different tribes, the 12th tribes, back to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Well, Jacob, Isaac, Abraham, if you go backward through. Verse 25, And when they agreed not among themselves, they departed after that Paul had spoken one word. Well spake the Holy Ghost by Isaiah the prophet unto our fathers, saying, Go unto this people and say, Hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and not perceive. For the heart of this people is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed, lest they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. Be it known therefore unto you that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles, like me, and that they will hear it. And when he had said these words, the Jews departed, and had great reasoning among themselves." Huh. There's a lot of great reasoning that goes on among the Jewish people. Um, <clears throat> and the papal Juden and the Jews and whatever. I, I try to classify two different groups there. You have the ones that have just completely sold out to Satan. They've mingled. They're in bed with the Roman Catholic Church. Their system is basically Roman Catholicism. It's just a works-based 
type of a thing. But then you have Jews that are actually saying, no, we're trying to keep, you know, go by the Torah and try to, you know, keep our ways and, and whatever and keep ourselves unspotted from the world and we don't want to intermingle and things and we actually want to go to Israel and it's not all just about money and everything else. So there are ones that are like that out there. Um, and then you have the Jews that are really the smartest, top tier of Jews are the ones that get saved. The ones that realize that uh, Jesus Christ fulfilled a lot of the prophecies of the Old Testament. And um, he'll be fulfilling the rest in the future. Again, there's a whole other big issue on that, which I'm not going to get into right now. But the Jewish people are not, as Bible believers, our stand on the whole thing is, and I, this is a huge study. I was trying to start this thing, and it's just becoming a, a nightmare trying to go through all the scriptures and everything with the limited time that I have many times, uh, answering other emails and sermon ideas and all the other stuff. Um, but the, the stand for a Bible believer is God, the, for modern-day Jews today, God in his word, Ezekiel 36, I think it is, God says that he's going to bring the Jews back to their land in unbelief. They don't come back because they've put their faith in Jesus Christ. So God brings Israel back, and that generation would not pass till all things be fulfilled. All right. Now, if you're a preterist, um, also known as um, very mentally deficient, then you think everything already happened. So just go to sleep. Don't watch the video. There's nothing bad coming in your future. It's all done already. Revelation already happened. A third of the trees burning up. Well, that just... Is symbolic. <laughs> Whoo, you know, cuckoo. Um, but if you're actually a Bible believer, you can look at the scriptures and you can say, yeah, there's no way everything already happened in the first century. No, we can see the mark of the beast coming. We can see a lot of this stuff that the Bible prophesies would happen in Revelation. It's coming. And you can look and you can say, okay, Israel is in their land. They're there in unbelief. They're trying to take Gaza right now. Do they have a right to Gaza? Yes, they do. But they're doing it through the means of unbelief. They're going in there and they're doing all kinds of bad things to get the Ishmaelites kicked out of there and, and whatever else. And there's war crimes. That, yeah, that's war. All right. Again, I'm not trying to justify that. But you look at any war and whatever else, what the Nazis did in World War II. You look at what the Russians did and what the Chinese, communist Chinese do and what the American military has done down through the years. War is bloody. War is horrible. War is terrible. Innocent civilians die in war. That's what happens. But people are so, the whole issue with Israel is if it was some other country, you know, all these bleeding heart liberals, what about the wars that go on in Africa? Zip, they don't say a thing. Stuff that goes on down in Central and South America and whatever, guerrilla warfare activities and the CIA and the black ops world and whatever else, and the drug running and the gun running and all the other stuff. Oh, uh, whatever. Israel happens over there in Gaza and Israel's mass murder. You know, Benjamin Netanyahu, he's, he's killing people. He's a mass murderer. Uh, the Jews have no right to the land over there. See, it's all about these liberals and the uh, Muslims. They don't believe the Bible. They don't believe that God has given that land to the children of Israel. And it's actually their property. See? So <clears throat> that's why they're, they're all upset about what's going on in Israel. And also there's another thing which I've warned about. And if you're Jewish... You better get it through your thick head. I'm trying to warn you right now. And that is, this anger is going to build in two ways. Because more and more truth is coming out about what you have done over the years. The Jews, the people you didn't excuse me, those who have yoked up to the Pope, what you've done in the finance world, what you've done in Hollywood, a lot of the other things, the corruption, that's coming out. And it's making wasps, and also Catholics especially, alt-right Catholics, white people are getting angry. And how much you've screwed us over and taken things from us and whatever else. And if you do that great taking thing, it's going to be the recipe for war. People aren't just going to just take it and, oh, okay, you're going to take everything that I, you know, am in debt with, you know, to the banks. That's okay. You know, I'll just willingly just kind of go off to a camp someplace or something. Or you can, I'll, you know, rent it back to me or whatever. No, it's going to be war. All right. People are getting very angry about that. That's why the Jews have been trying to cover up and conceal their identity. They're very scared of people really understanding things. So you're going to have white men coming after you because of what you did and also others as well. But then you have the people that are anti-Israel and they're already attacking. Okay, uh, I'm never going to attack a Jew. 
even if I'd see, you know, Paul Werberg, if he was still alive or something, and he comes down the street or whatever else, or here's Jamie Dimon, to give you a modern example of a papal Uden. Dimon's a, a, a Jewish name as far as one of the names of the Jewish families or whatever that does the finance thing. But papal Uden. Um, am I going to go attack him physically? No, I'm not going to attack him physically, but I'm going to certainly pray against the guy. He's wicked. And a lot of these other financier guys are as well. So the anger is building within America. Why? Because you see, when you rejected Jesus Christ, God scattered the nation of Israel. You go and you go into other countries and things. But then at the end times, God says, okay, I'm going to reestablish the land of Israel, bring you back in unbelief. I'm going to gather all the children of Israel and bring you back and put you back in your land. And when you're there, then I'm going to start to reveal things to you. The revelation of Jesus Christ. That's what's going to happen. And you can look at the book of Daniel and you can look at the book of Revelation and you can see how they perfectly mesh together and they just come together like that. And you'll get to see it. You say, well, it's going to be a, a lot of good things that I can see then to prove it. Yes, you'll have all the proof that you want by sight. You won't have to live by faith. Jews don't like to live by faith. Uh, they wanted sight. Moses, show us this. Moses, show us that. We want to see this. We want to see that. Um, where'd Moses go? Well, I don't know. He's gone. He left us. Let's make a golden calf so we have something to worship that we can see with our eyes. That's another big reason why the Jews, a lot of them, they don't want Jesus Christ because, you know, you can't see him. Um, so uh, that will be it for this little short study. Uh, hopefully you can think about some of the things I've said here. All right. Um, the Jews, uh, they conspire against Jesus Christ, and they lie against Jesus Christ. And as Christians, um, again, one of the attacks is that you know Christians are so weird because they want the Jews to go back to their land, and so that because they love the Jews, and so then God can pour out His wrath and kill most of them. That's kind of weird. You know, that's the way lost people think. No, our love as Christians is for the Scriptures. And so when we see the scriptures and the scriptures say the Jews are going to come back to their land, we say, okay, I pray that the Jews go back to the land. Well, it says that they're going to be killed there. Do you want them to be killed? No. I want them to see Moses and Elijah, the two witnesses. I want them to see all the miracles and all the things and to realize Jesus is our Messiah. Oh, wow. That's what I want. The Jews require a sign. The Greeks seek after wisdom. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 talks about that. So if the Jews require a sign, how do we get the signs to them? Back to Israel. Okay, that will be it. Again, thank you very much for watching. Please take heed to what I'm saying. I am not your enemy if you're Jewish. Not for one bit. Well, not for one minute, excuse me. Um, ben Shapiro, uh, he was actually confronted and saw another video of him. And they were saying, why aren't you coming back to Israel? Well, I still have work to do in America. Oh, well, Ben there, uh, your work's done. You need to take yourself over there to Israel. Um, you're an atheist at this point in time, in God's sight. You rejected him. And you currently reject him. You better head back to Israel while there's still some, some time. And if you're Jewish, I suggest the same thing for you. Please take heed to my words.